Alright, it's time to talk about Guild Wars 2's newest repeatable solo farm, Rift Hunting. More specifically, how to maximize your profit and actually reach the numbers listed on the fast farming website. First things first though. For this activity, you will need the secrets of the obscure expansion and go through part of the story on at least one character to be able to track and activate rifts. The gameplay loop itself is rather simple. Use your scan for Rift Mastery, which I highly recommend you keybind to an easy to reach key and you'll see glowing particles directing you to a certain direction. Instead of blindly following these, I would recommend you open up your world map and look for the area marked with a red circle. If there is a waypoint nearby, you're better off teleporting to the waypoint and then making a beeline for the rift. Once there, you'll need to activate the rift, go through a pre-event where you kill some easy enemies until the progress bar is full and then activate the rift once more. Assuming you're doing tier 1 rifts, this will spawn an elite enemy that needs to be taken care of. And then the farm basically repeats itself. When you check the fast farming numbers, you'll notice they actually list two gold per hour values. One is sitting just under 24 gold per hour and the other just under 33 gold. The difference lies in whether or not you're using common Cryptus motivations when you're spawning the boss. These motivations can be bought from the trading post, but to actually reach the highest gold per hour value, you will need to craft them. And to do so, you'll need to level up your Astral Ward Mastery to rank 2. Using this motivation isn't the only requirement to reach these numbers though. You will actually need the fourth Astral Ward Mastery as well, which will double the amount of Essences of Despair that will drop for you. There is some good news however. Rifts grant a great amount of experience and can be hunted in the new zones. So when you're just starting out, focus on farming Rifts in Amnitas or Skywatch Archipelago to max out your Masteries. And you'll still make a decent chunk of gold along the way. To give you an overall idea of the gold breakdown, the raw gold you'll be making is only around 23 silver per hour, but you'll gain enough experience, or rather spirit shards, to bump up the value by another 1 gold and 85 silver. Clearing the pre-event rewards you with a little over 8 gold, and finishing the rift boss will add another 15 gold and 27 silver. If you use the common cryptis motivation to spawn the boss, you can expect another 37 gold and 34 silver per hour on top. But to get this massive bonus, you will have spent about 28 gold in materials, making for a net difference of 9 gold gained per hour for using the motivation. We wouldn't be talking about Guild Wars 2 if there wasn't one more step to actually cash in on this gold though. See, most of the value from this farm comes from the essences of despair. These can be used in one of three ways. You can buy two minis that are account bound, or you can craft uncommon cryptis motivations, which can be sold for about 1 gold and 41 silver in profit. This also means that if you're strapped for gold right now, and you've been leveling up your masteries through rift hunting, you're probably sitting on a gold mine of essences already. A final and often overlooked thing to reach the gold per hour values on the fast farming website, and this is true for literally all of their farms by the way, is pacing. Their numbers assume you can clear 26 rifts per hour, which gives you a little over 2 minutes per rift, including traveling time. So you'll want to optimize your gameplay loop by searching for the rift, immediately opening your world map to scout for the red circle and teleporting to the nearest waypoint if necessary, and then of course make a beeline for the rift. They are actually advising you to solo farm these, as the pre-event scales based on the numbers of players around. Don't let this deter you from farming with other players though. I've completed enough rifts with others present and people are putting in the effort to quickly take care of spawned enemies anyway. Now, there is one more trick not listed on the fast website. Once you've leveled up your appropriate masteries, it can pay farming in other zones based on the map rewards. At the time of making this video, I can farm either in Amnitas or the Skywatch Archipelago, but also in the Elon Riverlands, the Domain of Istan and the Straits of Devastation. The map bonuses in the Riverlands are trade contracts, while those in the Domain of Istan are volatile magic and powerful venom sacks in the Straits of Devastation. Once we've gone through all map rotations, I assume there will be enough research done to figure out which maps will be the best gold per hour value, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. All of this also implies you focus on having an open world buff that can take care of enemies quickly. Luckily, it's easy to come by boons nowadays if you own End of Dragons, as you can go and charge up at the stations for a 2 hour buff, granting you effectively every single boon in the game whenever you engage in combat. 
If you feel like you need help with your build, hit me up in the comments down below. And also make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel because I've got quite a list of new videos coming out soon.